Young women have been growing up with an indoctrination of what womanhood is and what it should be. They've been taught everything that is in direct opposition to the Word of God. Young women who want to be different from the world are rare, but they are real. On this Rare But Real podcast, Audrey Brogy will often be joined by her daughter, Grace Anna, and her daughters-in-law, Maureen, Kesset, and Marilyn, who desire to be discerning in a day when everything seems to go against God's design. Join them in the journey of becoming rare but real. It takes courage and conviction. And now, Audrey Brogy. Hey, I am so grateful that we have a chance to record another podcast, and I'm always so grateful every time I sit down to do these that um, we have the means to do it, and we have people who work so diligently to make sure it goes out and it's aired, and I'm just grateful for so many people and believers in my life who help me do so many different things, and I'm also grateful for my girls, you know, I um, those of you who listen and follow. You know, that's what I call my daughter and my daughters-in-law. Um, you know, when I was raising my family, Carl and I had four boys, but we had this one girl sandwiched right in the middle um, of our family. So grateful for her and grateful for my sons. And one of the biggest blessings in my life is the fact that all my sons just chose wonderful wives who I feel like are now, you know, my daughters. I know people sometimes use that term, Grace and a daughter in love, but I still say daughters-in-law, but I love them so well and so much, and I'm so thankful for um, for them and how God's brought them into their lives. Mm-hmm. But my daughter is here with me today because we just finished this weekend at our church where she taught her study that she titled A Vision for Motherhood. And I love the fact that she put it together, that she taught it to her women at um, Capital Community Church up in Raleigh, where her husband pastors. And when she was first talking to me about it, and I'm going to let her share how it came to be and and all the things that God's done in her life through it and, and those kinds of things. Um, but I remember when, when she was talking to me about it back then, I was like, okay, once you give it to your women, I want you to come and give it at our church. Um, and that's what she did. That's what she did this past weekend. And I'm so grateful for that. It was just really... It was just really great to have her here, and as a mom, seeing your your grown daughter um, embrace, uh, I just embrace so much of, uh, I mean, just embrace God's word. I guess is the, I'm, I'm at a lack of words of what to say, but um, but I'm just so grateful. My heart was so full this past weekend with her here. So, with that said. Um, I I want to um, Grace Anna to share. Oh, and let me say this because the next episodes on the Rare but Real podcast will be the sessions that she taught at our church, and we thought it would be nice, fun, uh, encouraging for her to come on before we air those, just to talk a little bit about it, the history of it, how God put it in our on her heart, and the direction she wanted to take. Because those of you who know me know that I've taught uh, biblical mothering what for years in our church, and it's just so great to see what God did in her life and how she put together this study that I think is going to be so helpful for so many women. So with that said, Grace Anna, welcome. (laughs) Well, thanks, Mom. And you know, I love that you asked me to share about this on your podcast first, because really, I mean, the reason I was able to write this study is because the vision for motherhood that you gave me growing up. And I think, Mm -hmm. you know, for so so many women who there's many women who grew up in Christian homes and by God's grace, they were taught a biblical foundation for motherhood. Uh, But sadly, there's a whole lot of women out there who do not have that vision for motherhood. And I'm so thankful that, you know, you gave that to me, uh, I have memories of growing up going to your mothering from the heart conference. Mm-hmm. Um, but I knew from a very young age that being a mother was important and it wasn't because, um, you just loved it or liked it, or you had a certain disposition for that, but because it was part of God's design. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I just want to say that first, that I'm just so incredibly grateful for that. And I think, as I was 
kind of praying through writing this study, it really came out of my gratefulness to God that I had been given this vision for motherhood. You know, scripture talks about too much is given, much is required. Mm -hmm. And I felt almost a burden that I had been given a lot. Mm -hmm. And I have, of course, as you know, over the years written on motherhood, but Mm -hmm. I had not like put together anything cohesively. And I was struggling to find something out there that was cohesive, practical, theological, and also in a discipleship format. Mm -hmm. Um, I was looking for that. And back in the spring when I was pregnant with Truman, I had just been receiving a lot of requests from women at my church, questions on motherhood. Mm -hmm. And I found myself, you know, texting different women, uh, phone calls, and I was realizing that I was repeating myself a lot, and a lot of what I was sharing was so much of what I had been taught Mm -hmm. regarding motherhood. So that's kind of like how it came to be, was just realizing, you know, I need to put something together that the women in my church can read. Um, And I I was, it kind of happened in a couple different phases. First, I remember I called you and said, okay, I'm having Truman in July. It's the beginning of April, I think. Um, I wonder if I could put something together before he's born and teach it to my women. Because I kind of have this thing, once I have Truman, <laughs> life is going to slow down big time. Mm-hmm. And then I knew we'd start the school year and all of those things. And, and you said, which is funny, because when I think back on what you said, you said, go for it. And so often, mom, you tell me like, don't do that. (laughs) (laughs) Don't take that on. You know, that's going to be too much. But Mm -hmm. your advice to me was go for it. And Mm -hmm. before I go any further, why did you tell me that? (laughs) Because of what you just said, you know, that Mm -hmm. one, because I knew what was on your heart. I knew, and I also know because of all the years before, you know, when I was your age, I know the same thought of, um, the young women in my church, you know, I'm 10 years, maybe ahead of them. And a lot of the women in my church in their twenties were asking me the same type of things. And it was right around the time I was expecting my fifth child. Um, mm-hmm. Because the very first one that I taught in my home, uh, Jameson was an infant. He had been, you know, was born in July. <laughs> and then, um, but I am not as smart as you, or I'm not as, I don't know. I, I just mean, I didn't have the same even way to put it together. I remember I was, I thought, well, and, and, and again, I, I'm dittoing what you said because it was the same type of thing for me. I'm sharing the same things, wasn't texting because that wasn't anything that wasn't going on, but it's the, it was the same things. I was answering the same questions and women just wanted to know what I was doing. You know, could I help mm-hmm. them? And so I found the same thing. And I remember for me, it was thinking through, okay, if I had, you know, six hours or five hours or just an afternoon to share everything that I'm holding on to for dear life, what I'm trying to do with my children, even though, you know, y'all weren't grown, y'all were young, but this is what I'm doing. You know, it's not like I'm like now I can teach because I'm 65 and I have all these years, but at the time it's like, this is what I'm holding on to for dear life. This is what God's word Mm -hmm. says. This is what I'm trying to apply in my life. This is, I'm trying to obey this. I have not arrived. I don't, you know, this is just what I'm holding on to. Anyway, all that to say, I remember thinking at the time, I just needed to go for it. I just needed to have them over in my home. I opened up my home and they came and I just saw God work. And and not not only that, Grace Anna, the time of life that you're in and before Truman was born, it was the time if you're going to be all in for something and what you just said about the school years and all that stuff, this is the time to focus on this because this is going to be multiplied throughout the years. And I have those years to think back on because I remember at the time with me when I did the first Bible study, I thought, oh, okay, now I did it. It's good. But then it was like women who couldn't come were like, can you do it again? So then I would do it. And I just realized what you just said women when they have that baby it's like your whole world changes and you and you got to have a framework to know how to raise them and the world's not giving us that and it's just like you know a lady that I met in a store yesterday I went to buy some hairspray and I asked her if she went to church and she said no but my children go to 
I told her where I went, Community Bible Church, and she said, my children go to the sports program there, because we have upward sports at the church. And she, and she But her words were, you know, we just wanted to give them a good foundation. And I, mm-hmm. I'm just saying, when you start having children, you think that way. Anyway, all that to say is like, if you're ever going to do it, this is the focus time. Just do it, because I know, just like you do, that life's going to get so busy, and your, your attention is going to be turned to the new baby, of course, and then your mm-hmm. organization for the school year and it's like this is your time you know that's why I said go for it (laughs) I I mean I think that was just God ordained advice and then I talked to Grant about it I remember we were working in the backyard and I just said like I just you know I long for you know my women to have a vision for motherhood and I said that because that's what I feel like I have been given and that is what Mm -hmm. I like you said it's the things that I'm holding on to it's not oh I've got this all together right (laughs) it's no this is this is what I'm holding on to and and Grant just said that's what you should call it a vision for motherhood and so it kind of just you know when something is God's will so Mm -hmm. often it begins just to fall into place and so Um, in April, we were kind of wrapping up the school year. So the kids, you know, it wasn't too crazy in terms of their assignments. And so I just started writing every spare moment I had. I just wrote and wrote and wrote. And I am glad that I didn't know how long it was going to take me (laughs) to write the study. I'm so (laughs) thankful because I would have never done it. I know. (laughs) But I'm so thankful I wrote and wrote. And it was kind of like what you said. I wanted to think okay, if there was just, you know, what are the main things that I am holding on to and that have given me a framework for motherhood? Because I think that's what I realized is is motherhood, you know, and I talk about this in the talk, it's hard. It's Mm -hmm. actually really hard. Um, And, but Christian women, we have this, strong, like you said, foundation that supports us. And so it it runs deep and it should run deep in the Christian woman's life. And so I I know for myself, I'm constantly leaning on that. And then I realized that there's a lot of women out there who are not, they don't have that. They're not leaning on that and they're just really floundering. So put together the study and yes, Um, I taught it to my women in May. So it, it was, um, I wrote it in a, you know, talk type format, but, and you'll hear that on the podcast because I taught a portion of those sessions at your church. Mm -hmm. Um, but I put them into the Bible study format in a written form, a written chapter form, because what I really wanted was a resource that, you know, a young mom, even a single woman Mm -hmm. could pick up, do on her own, do with an older woman, do in a small group format and be able to walk through that without having to, oh, I got to turn on this video and watch this person teach it. And then I got to, you know, which is wonderful. And there's definitely a Mm -hmm. place for that, Mm -hmm. but I just wanted them to have it in written form. So, you know, that's, the, the format is that they um, will be able to, Lord willing, you know, go through this on their own, have homework, discussion questions. Um, there's practical chapters on how this is fleshed out, like how it's lived out. Um, I even included a couple gems in there from you, Mom. <laughs> So I, I included this poem called Too Many Children, and then I love your practical everyday advice for mothers. And I wanted to include some of that stuff because, I mean, my kids are 12 and under. And like I said, this is not, you know, like my expert tips and advice. This is, you know, wisdom from God's word that I'm giving. But I thought having an older woman, some of the things that you've written, Mom, are just so good and so I wanted to include those too for older women who might be mm-hmm. you know reading the Bible study as well yeah yeah well it was so good and I, I love the fact I didn't get to come when you were started teaching it, it in your home um, 
to the first three, but I came for the last one and it was so just as a mom to you, um, but it was just so incredible to see the generational thing going on. I mean, you know, Grace Anna, I used to think, uh, you know, long time ago when I was a young mom, even before you were born, but when I started having my children and un- understanding or reading just the Bible, Titus 2, Three to three to five, the role of the older women, woman in the church, what she's supposed to be doing, the older women, what they are supposed to be doing in the lives of the younger women. <clears throat> and I remember that at that time I had one older woman <clears throat> who invested in me, who I could look up to, but there wasn't just, you know, a lot of them mm-hmm. around. I'm not saying there weren't women who were godly women. I'm not, I'm not trying to throw any woman under the bus. I'm just saying it was hard to find. And, um, Mm -hmm. but I remember when I was really young, because I I wanted to know what the Bible said, of course, just theology and understand the books of the Bible. But I also wanted to know, how do you flesh this out? God seems, this is in my young mind, 20 something mind. God says, the older women have the ministry of the younger women. And I'm a younger woman. And I want older women to mentor me, not in a selfish kind of way, but just I want role models, but they just didn't seem to be in abundance. And I remember telling the Lord at that time, Lord, I'm young, but please help me become this woman so that one day in the future, if you give me years, that I can be that for the generations who are coming up behind me. It wasn't just about, oh, meet my needs as a young woman. Just help me become that way. I didn't want it to be a, an excuse like, well, there's not any older women who are, you know, seem that seem to be really want to take the time with young women who have little children and all that stuff. I just wanted to be that kind of woman to give them biblical principles, but I wanted to learn them first. So anyway, um, that Mm -hmm. was, so then when I went to Raleigh and I see you, my daughter, and then all these women and, and the generational, um, women who were there, you, y'all had every age represented. It just was so, I don't know, encouraging to me to see that take place and to see that, you know, that God's word and is flourishing and women are flourishing and, and not only that, but there's still such a hunger for this because we need it. I mean, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to say, I was really encouraged this past weekend when I was at your church and seeing a lot of the older women, women who were there because you know, sadly, there's a lot of women in the local church who are, oh, I'm done with kids, mm-hmm. and they're done that, moving on. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't find them in the halls of the nursery. You don't find them in the student ministry. You don't find them there because their children are grown. Um, but that is one of the things that I think is so beautiful, yeah, about your church. And then I've just been seeing this in my own church is older women and younger women who desire to have a vision for for motherhood. And and that's one of the things that I talk about in the study is that, you know, the world I think has a somewhat shallow perspective of motherhood. Um, You know, it can, it's just, you know, maybe the act of having a child or um, it raise, you know, raising them and anybody can do that. You know, we've really, really kind of gotten (laughs) things have gotten really muddy when it comes to that. Um, Mm -hmm. But we have a unique calling as women to be um, spiritual mothers, obviously first and foremost to the children God gives us in our home, but it it extends so much beyond that um, in the church to women who have a heart and a vision for, like you said, mom, that heart that God gave you for pouring into the next generation and not, um, you know, hanging up the towel and saying, I'm done, but I'm going to keep on helping the women behind me with this vision. And I also, one of the reasons why I wanted to put this in book format is because I think discipleship materials are incredibly helpful. If a young woman comes to you and says, hey, I want to be discipled, um, I always like to have to go through something you have okay obviously you have a mentoring relationship and that can be an ongoing relationship with a woman in your life that's not 
a designated necessarily time that you meet together. You're just a mentor to her Mm -hmm. and you come alongside her. But sometimes a woman comes to you and says, I want to be disciples. Like, will you invest in me? And it's good to have kind of clear ramifications of what does that look like? Mm -hmm. And so I think having a discipleship tool where, okay, we're going to go through something for four to six weeks. You know, Mm -hmm. you're going to memorize scripture. We're going to do this together. You've got homework to do. Um, it's just really helpful in making that time rich Mm -hmm. and also, you know, it's not just nebulous of, okay, we're going to do this for like two years, which you certainly could, Mm -hmm. but that limits the ability for you to get to know other women as well. So I'm hoping and praying that this will be a tool that, you know, an older woman can pick up and go through a younger woman, um, And that will be helpful as well, because I think there's a lot of women out there who want to disciple another woman, but they're looking for the tools to do it. Right. And um, I would love to see more resources out there, you know, like this, that are discipleship resources for the local church. Sorry. No, no, no. (laughs) No, and and then that's so good. And even what you said in terms of um, having some accountability um, in, Mm -hmm. in terms of it lets you see too who's serious about this, you know, yes. because it is true. Like sometimes over the course of all these years that I've been in ministry, there might be women who, um, you know, they maybe they want to be um, taken under the wing of an older woman, but they just want someone. Sometimes it's just I just want someone that I can call and vent to rather than. I really want to grow in my relationship with the Lord. I really want my perspective to be centered on the Lord. I really even want this older woman to speak truth into my life at times when I need to be rebuked or when I need to hear something that's difficult to hear rather than just, you know, being patted on the back all the time, although there should be plenty of that when it's, you know, when it's appropriate as well. But that's very important. And I know for me over the years, you know, I've so often asked younger women to to come with me, you know, where I'm serving. Oh, I'm working in the I'm taking care of infants on Sunday morning. Come serve with me. I'm teaching children scripture memory on Wednesday nights. Come serve with me. Come learn from me in that aspect, as well as the other ways that we can invest in the lives of women, because that also helps them see how important the body of Christ is, that it's not just me, um, someone that I can depend on as much as that that's very important, but also how we need the whole body of Christ and how God wants Mm -hmm. to use our gifts in the body of Christ. And I love too, even in your study that you have a section on that talking, encouraging women to be involved in the local church. You want to talk about that just a little bit and they'll hear it as they, as we air these podcasts, but put your heart behind, I mean, share your heart behind that of including that in your study. Yeah, I think, So often, you know, women are struggling in motherhood, but it's just symptomatic of a deeper problem. Um, You know, they're lonely, they're isolated, it's hard. And, you know, I've even had, you know, women reach out to me, can we just get together? I'm just, I'm just having such a hard time. And a lot of times, not all, because we all go through just hard, lonely seasons, but Mm -hmm. a lot of times it's you know, they, they, maybe they're going on Sunday morning, but they're not, like you said, serving anywhere in the church. They've so had motherhood be their entire world that they've forgotten that, you know, the body of Christ needs them and they need the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're not serving anywhere in the local church. Their involvement is minimal. And because of that, God, you know, designed us and he says in his word, do not forsake the assembling together as the habit of some. And then he talks about, you know, the, how he's given each one of us a spiritual gift that we're to use in the body of Christ. And so I think sometimes, sadly, women allow motherhood to pull them away mm-hmm. from the body. And then they start searching it for community in places that um, leave them empty, whether it's, you know, hours scrolling on social media mm-hmm. or you know, just looking for little groups to join or things, or even like you said, it's a wonderful thing to meet with an older woman. Wonderful. But if, if you're doing it, um, just, you know, because you're not, you're not doing the basics first, Mm -hmm. um, then, then that 
it's it's not healthy. It's a needy relationship versus, um, you know, helping you get on your feet and right. put those priorities first. So a lot of the study is at the beginning, just building the proper foundation and, and helping women recognize that motherhood is not compartment, a compartmentalized compartment in their lives, but that their relationship with the Lord and their husband and then their children are all intrinsically connected. And so, um, hopefully too, you know, let's say that there is a woman, a young mom in your church who's struggling, um, in motherhood, this could be something that, you know, a woman in the church can go through with her and you're actually going to walk through all of those issues together. Mm -hmm. And so Lord willing, it will help her see how important, um, the body of Christ is to her relationship with the Lord. And, And just another thought. Mom, as you were explaining about how you encourage women to serve with you, I just, I love that, um, you know, because I'm sure you would say, yes, your season of life has changed, but just because you don't have young children in the home doesn't mean you aren't busy and that serving Mm -hmm. isn't still a sacrifice. And so for young women to see that that service is, is something God wants to use in their life, um, And then also with the scripture memory, you know, any woman that I disciple, she has to be willing to do the scripture memory. Mm -hmm. And if she's not, and I do it with her, so this is not like, (laughs) I'm doing it with her, so I have to be willing too. Right. But it kind of gives you that litmus test of, okay, you're serious about this. Right. Like, we're serious about this. And it is just amazing when you start just doing the basics, how your view of motherhood and your perspective mm-hmm. changes because mm-hmm. God renews us from the inside out through his word. And, and so that's, yeah, no, 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 that's good. I love that. And I love the whole thing about scripture memory and you mentioning the serve with me. And when you said, you know, yeah, the, I, I think about how, I don't know how many years I've been teaching scripture memory to children. All I know is I have children who, who, you know, have lived long enough that they're, I mean, some of them are probably 40 now who learn Psalm 1. And, and I still teach that same class. I still teach those same children. When I say the same children, they're all grown. You know, so many are grown. And then I look at them. I mean, I was so struck with this a couple of weeks ago and talking about this in terms of serve with me with, with people. And, and I think about the women. Now, now I feel myself tearing up, so I'll try to keep it in. But I think about the women over the years who, as I'm teaching scripture memory to these children, and I've said, come with me. I think about a woman named Michelle. I think about Charlotte. I think about, I mean, I could just name so many women. And now Bethany, who's with me, and her sister Jordan, who sometimes is in there with us as well. And I think about not only have these children been memorizing these past, these psalms all these years, but these adults learn them with them. And then they, and I didn't even ask them to, but they then want to say it for the children. And even the choir teacher who leads the singing this, no, it was last season. And I'm sure she'll probably say another one. She memorized Psalm 34 and she came up and said it for the class. And I remember when she, Michelle, many years ago, she did the same thing. Thing. And and that's just because, I, you know, with some of these women, it's just like, come with me. Come help me on Wednesday nights as I teach scripture memory to these children. And then you just never know what that's going to do in the lives of the women as well. Even though I probably should have been way more proactive and said, you memorize it too. But they did. They just did it on their mm-hmm. own. And then seeing like, you know how you t- talk about, I mean, how the scripture says, when a man is fully trained, he'll be like his teacher. And then I think about how I can totally trust women and even some young guys who came in and helped me in that class. They became the male version, you know, of teaching the young boys the scripture and then and then other women. It's like I can totally trust them because they've learned all of the phrases. They've learned how to encourage the kids. They've learned how to, you know, the memory hooks. I'm just saying that's all part of this discipleship within the church. It's not it doesn't always have to be separate, even though you do that, too. But I'm just saying it just I don't know. I I thought about it when you were saying about encouraging these women to learn the scripture because you're right. It's such a 
bedrock and some of these, you know, the scripture that that some of these children have challenged me because some of the ones that I'm the Psalms I'm teaching them, I haven't even memorized them yet. The ones I started with, I, I did have under my belt, but now I have new ones. Anyway, I didn't mean to get so far off on that, but but thinking no, about... No, it's not far <laughs> off at all, because, you know, when I walk the halls of your church and, um, and in the children's ministry at your church, I see the fruit of faithful teaching and Bible memory in the hall, in those classrooms, the women who have, they have a vision for motherhood. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think as, as women in the local church, um, we all, you know, we desperately, we ne- we need this. And I just, you know, I think about older women coming alongside younger women and showing them the way, how much that will transform mm-hmm. um, families, um, but also the church in terms of, you know, for too long, I think we've just avoided, the church has just avoided speaking on these subjects that are so foundational. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, one of the one of the things I talk about in this study is, is Psalm 144.12 that talks about how women are corner pillars. And, and I unpack that of how godly women hold a structure together it's a me- you know it's a metaphor but it's showing that um how important their role is mm-hmm. and so um yeah it, it would make me i mean i just think of how much it would give god glory um just to see women who embrace that know mm-hmm. that and fill the church um, well, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. sometimes, sometimes, you know, people, I think sometimes the reason it's been avoided is people say, well, it's not, you know, mothering, not everyone's a mother. So then the pendulum swings where it goes to the other side where we don't want, you know, thinking that it's going to be offensive to talk about that. But at the same time, we, we have to talk about it because God chose to bring his very own son into the world as an infant through the womb, through that whole process of being a tiny baby and a, a woman becoming a mother who was going to mother the Savior. We also know from the book of Genesis that, you know, when God looks down the corridors of time, when he says to, you know, Adam and Eve, for this cause a man shall leave his father and his mother, and the two shall become one flesh. Adam and Eve didn't have a f- father and mother, but God, that's God's plan. To That's how he brings people into the world by by through the birth process and having little children to raise. And so it's so important and we've we just haven't taught women and men, but I'm thinking specifically in terms of women to have that vision for motherhood that God clearly outlines in his scripture that's so incredibly important because these little babies are put into our arms and we are the most important people in their lives in those impressionable, formidable years when they're so little, and they won't even remember it, but what God does in their hearts and in their minds, and what He does internally, who they are, it's so much a part of who they become, and um, and that's why it's, you know, and even in Isaiah, I'm thinking about that, um, I think it's in Isaiah um, 49, where the scripture says, can a woman forget her nursing child and have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget but I will not forget you. Behold, I've inscribed you on the palm of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. And I think about that because in our sinful state, you know, so many women, you know, turn their back on how God made them and they somehow can forget their children and they don't raise them and they don't take care of them. But God says, you know, even though that we may forget, he doesn't forget. And then for those of us whose hearts belong to him, he brings them back to himself and so we want to hold on to what he says about our, the incredible role that he has placed on us to raise these children for him it's just so incredibly important so and i'm so thankful and grateful that for you know that you're doing this in your generation as well so well, that's right and i just think about just what you said and just thinking about to just that Single women, I talk about this in the study, that single women also can have just an incredible impact Mm -hmm. in the lives of children, lives of children, um, 
as well. So it's, mm-hmm. I hope that all women in the church, you know, will embrace um, God's design for them as mothers. Well, I love that because I often remind women, whether they're, you know, in their early years, that just the way God made us, our physical bearings, our bodies, everything about us, even if the Lord, even if it's in God's plan for us not to have children, all children see us as mothers, as see, see women as mothers. They identify on that. They look at a, a grown woman and they, they see that. They see a, wo- a woman who is nurturing and that's the way God's wired us. And that's too, I love that the, even the single women in our church they have such a nurturing mothering heart and fill so many needed um, ministry roles and just life roles and it's just a beautiful thing to see it's just a beautiful thing to see so anyway I know um, is there anything else you want to say before we before I close us out um, the podcast today and then I'll just say I guess because I know women have been asking, okay, when or where can I get it? Just that they check Unashamed Truth, the website. Mm-hmm. Um, and Unashamed Truth will be taking, I think, pre-orders, some pre-orders before Christmas, and then it should be available. Some women will be able to get it before Christmas is what I'm saying. But then mm-hmm. after the holidays, um, you know, anyone can get it. So just be checking that website. That's right. And we'll be, and of course, I will be letting women know when it's available as well as as uh, women ask me. Um, but Grace Anna, thank you for taking the time out while um, everybody's busy doing a few things. Um, and uh, and anyway, let me, let me close this in prayer. Father, I'm so grateful for your word. I'm thankful that... Um, you have impressed on my heart all those years ago that I needed to see children the way you see them and that um, I needed to recognize that the children that you gave to Carl and me were gifts from you. They weren't gifts from the world. They were gifts from you. And um, I thank you for somehow um, working through us to um, that 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 you just worked in our lives to help us raise our children and that you're doing that for every generation. I'm always reminded of Psalm um, 100 at the end when it says that you are faithful to all generations. And I'm so thankful for that. In Jesus' name, amen. If you enjoyed this episode of Rare But Real, be sure to subscribe so you'll be notified when a new episode is posted. And share this podcast with friends. Follow Audrey on Instagram and Facebook at Mothering from the Heart. And listen to all her messages on the Search the Scriptures app.